Where to? Harvard Circle. Three stops, 250. In 1994, before the premiere of the show Friends, director James Burroughs took the entire cast to Vegas for one night. He gave each cast member a $100 bill and told them to go and gamble it away. Enjoy it, he said. Do some things in public now, because once you're as famous as you're about to be, you'll never be able to do them again. The show premiered September 2nd, 1994. Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Matthew Perry, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, and David Schwimmer would never again be anonymous. They would never again even belong to themselves. They would become ours, our property, our stars. After October 3rd, 2023, Albert Circle. Have a good one. You too, miss. Stay warm. I have a good sense of what that feels like. Look over it, Elena, Elena, look over it, Elena. Holy Elena. shit. What about the rumors he cheated on his ex-wife with you? Look over it, Elena, Elena. Let me start by saying this. If there was one thing I never aspired to be when becoming a physicist, it was famous. This course provides a thorough introduction to the principles and methods of physics for students who have good preparation in physics and mathematics. Emphasis is placed on problem solving and quantitative reasoning. This course covers Newtonian mechanics, special relativity, gravitation, thermodynamics, and waves. Please take out your notes. Physics, the study of matter and energy, has its victories in research labs and deep in university campuses. All the cocktail parties skip small talk, with which none of us are very comfortable anyway, in favor of discussions like, <laughs> but you see, Einstein did mean it. But John Bell disproved it. A conjecture. The discipline has produced just two people famous enough to be known by the masses, Einstein and Oppenheimer. And even then, I doubt most people could explain their accomplishments. I had gone into physics to explore string theory. Undergrad, through grad school, then to a professorship at Harvard, where I now taught, researched, and wrote. Most recently, I wrote a book I'm sure you've heard of, on the ignored contributions of Einstein's first wife, Mileva Matic, in his early work. Yeah, which went about as ignored as her contributions, much to my department's dismay. Physicists do need other physicists' attention, if nothing else. And so, in a world of unfamous people, I was one of the most unfamous among them and therefore the last person in the world prepared for over here. Look over here. unwanted, Elena, Elena. unsolicited Elena. celebrity. Over. Oh my God, are you okay? Are you alive? What do you need? Nothing, I'm fine. Becky, what is going on? What is this? You can't be fine, you were just Diana. Here, can I? No, I don't need water. I don't want to take off my coat. That's what you're wearing? I wear this every day. Yeah, but today... What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh my god, you don't know. Okay. Becky. Ford Hamilton is infatuated with Elena Caring. Who is Elena Caring? The Harvard professor dating Hollywood's leading man. What? No. Ford Hamilton? The... Movie star, yes. This one's from TMZ. Ford Hamilton and Elena Caring. Inside their romance. Perez Hilton. Absolutely smitten. A tell-all account of Ford Hamilton and his brainy broad. Brainy broad? It goes on from there. Page six says you've been dating since July... The Post says, he's thinking of buying a house in Boston. To be closer to you, of course. Huh. But apparently you're also the reason for his divorce. You have got to be kidding me. Nope. It says that a source close to Rebecca Lang reports, she always felt threatened by Caring's intellect and is devastated that rumors surrounding the romance are true. Who is Rebecca Lang? His ex-wife. You've met the man. 
How don't you know this? How do I not... I don't know him. You know him a little. Becky, I met the man once. A month ago. He wanted to talk about Einstein, not... not alimony. So it wasn't... you know... No! Of course not. No! It was work. Okay. It was a scut job Morrison asked me to do because my book had embarrassed the department. He... Ford, Hamilton, was researching a role. He's playing Einstein or something, if you can believe it. It was two days of him walking three feet behind me, wearing that ridiculous hat and sunglasses, pretending to be normal, taking notes. Okay. It was meaningless. He was meaningless. Trivial. As far as I could tell, he was a two-bit actor with minimal talent and no head for science. Or... Oh, I cannot believe this. Well, apparently, he's never been happier. It's a lie, Becky. Well, a girl can dream. Hey, where are you going? To my office. I've got two sections to prep for, notes to do, and a grant to apply to. You're going to work. Today. What would you have me do? Not work? Risk more damage to my career? I'm a physicist. I'm not, not a piece of arm candy. Today's the same as any other day. The press have got the story wrong, not me. Elena, good morning. Elena, hi. Hi. Hello. Elena Carey? I don't know who you are. Good morning, Elena. Elena! Good morning. Hi. Who are these people? Elena, good morning. It takes seven minutes to walk from the woman's restroom downstairs up to my office. By the time I'd reached my hallway, 28 people had greeted me by name. I knew two of them. Oh, Elena, Elena. The extent of spread of the story's proliferation had become clear. I was a walking, talking gossip rag. I'm a Twitter hit. Hey, E, what's going on, girl? It's Professor Caring. What was that all about? I don't know. The Post said she's nice. Maybe they broke up. I knew what I had to do. I was a physicist. I'd spent half my life, 34 divided by 2, 17 years getting to the bottom of the truth. At Harvard, for shit's sake. Fact could trump any existing narrative. And I wasn't going to have this existing narrative cloud my career. There was only one path forward. Sue them all for libel. Every single one and see how they like it. Where are my keys? There. Hello. Ford. I... Nice day for it, isn't it? You... Remember me? I... You showed me around, then told me you were nonplussed by celebrity? I don't recall. <laughs> sure you do. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you expecting a welcoming committee? No, just a little hospitality. You wanted to see what it was like as a physicist. And I found out. Hard work, difficult concepts, and barely concealed condescension to anyone you perceive to be somewhat beneath you. Somewhat? There it is. I don't have time to tutor remedial physics. I never said that. Right. Not that you were here to learn anyway. I'm sorry? Walking around with those ridiculous glasses, pretending to be anonymous, but desperate for someone to notice. I was trying not to be recognized. By wearing a black hat and indoor shades? In September? Please. I was. I'm sure. And doesn't the circus prove it? I didn't want this. Uh Uh-huh. Then why are you here? I don't remember your office looking like this. Like what? So cluttered. I've been busy. Apparently. How did you get in here? I keep this locked. Kirk, your janitor? What about him? He loves romantic comedies. Great. Nora Ephron, Richard Curtis, Cameron Crowe. Fiction. Compelling dramas. Ridiculous dramas. About two ordinary people figuring out how to deal meaningfully with another human being. He loved the marriage plot. Ah, your crowning achievement. For now. I thought you were trying to distance yourself from those things. I am. Except when life requires you to break into buildings. Residuals come in all forms. Don't worry, no one saw me. A small comfort. Why are you here? Well, Ford Hamilton can't seem to stay away. I'm sure he could. (laughs) It's good to see you too, honey. It's been a while. Honey? What do you prefer? Babe? Pumpkin? Dr. Caring? Peanut? Or nothing. Uh, These are the early days. I'll workshop it. Please don't. Our first fight? Please. Well, there you go. 
it was bound to happen at some point. We're not dating. Oh, I, I know. We never could be. For the first time, we agree. Trust me, you're not my type. How did this happen? How it always happens? <laughs> I do my best to conceal my movements. I hide in plain sight. I walk around trying to be invisible. And then someone tips someone off. Someone sounds the horn. Someone snaps a photo. It gets published. And the next thing you know, I'm seconds from walking down the aisle with someone I've barely met. Someone forgets the difference between person and zoo animal once again. And here we are. They have a photo? Of what? Us. There is no us. A photo of you and I from an inside source. That's usually enough. What photo of us? <sighs> Here. This is of the two of us talking. I believe we were arguing. We were disagreeing. Vehemently. Well, you weren't listening. You weren't explaining properly. Because I don't have time to teach remedial physics. <laughs> Just how I remember you. Such a lovely, sweet-tempered woman. You know what? I don't have time for this. Just issue a denial and leave. I could do that. Or... Or what? The way I see it, there are two ways we could play this. Full-scale denial... Exactly. Or taking this... this... this crap... and for once, using it, as opposed to running from it. Running from... The harm they've done. Look, it's no secret to anyone that the studio isn't pleased with me playing Einstein. I'm a rom-com guy. I'm an act-with-his-abs guy. They don't buy it, or they didn't until this. Ford Hamilton dating a Harvard professor? True or not true, it helps them out. Helps me out. I want to keep my role. I don't give a... And you, you, you need some celebrity. I do not. You do. I don't. You do. I don't. I've read your book. What? On Einstein's first wife, Maliva Maritz. Marich. Right. I liked it. It's smart, well-written, and insightful. Whether the world agrees with you or not, there are questions to be asked there. What was her role? How much did she influence him? Why has she never gotten credit? But you know what I discovered after I read it? No. That I was one of the only people who had read it. You have a problem. You're the only woman in an otherwise male department, and you're getting overlooked because the work you've done hasn't garnered much attention. Not that it hasn't been as good or as impressive. It just hasn't gotten as much heat. You have an optics problem. Well, so do I. What if we let this take care of all of that? We pretend to date for a month. Until the end of production. You'll fly out to LA. I'll have a production option in your book for a fee. We both win. And they don't. What do you say? What do I say? What do I say? Get out of my office, please. <laughs> that's it? Yeah, that's it. I've worked for 17 years to get here. Half my life. It hasn't been easy, and it hasn't been fun. I've had to prove my worth time and time again to be let in the door. And now, do you know what's going to happen? Despite all that work, despite all those years, whenever someone Googles my name, all they're going to see is you. I am no longer Dr. Elena Caring, physicist. I am Dr. Elena Caring, the professor who maybe went out with the Hollywood heartthrob. It will be what people remember about me. True or false, no matter what else I've done, I'll be a line on a late night show. A joke. That's it. I'm not interested in fame. I'm not interested in your scheme. I just want my life to go back to what it was. And fine, you don't want to deny it? I will. All right, I understand. I'll get my people to issue a denial. Thank you. But you should know something, and I'm not gloating or rubbing it in. It won't make a bit of difference. When they Google your name, I'll still come up. Whether we deny it or not, yes, it's terrible. Yes, it's unfair. Yes, it couldn't be further from the truth. But that doesn't matter. Not to them, anyway. So the question is this. Do you want to use it to your advantage? Or do you want to let them use it to their advantage? I... Goodbye, Dr. Carey. The rumors are unsubstantiated and untrue. 
Fort Hamilton and I met once on a campus visit as a favor to the director, Ray Rabiner, with whom my department head, Dr. Morrison, is a close childhood friend. What do you think? It's good. I want it to be convincing. You say full-scale denial. So it's okay. Trust me. It makes sense. Thank you. Who are you going to send it to? I... I have no idea. There were hundreds of articles. To hundreds of magazines. This is why celebrities have PR teams. People who deal with this for you. And even they can't get the plugs you're getting. Plugs. Media attention. Traction. Etc. Traction? You're trending. What do you mean? Have you seen Vogue? Sorry, stupid question. It's got a photo of you from this morning. They like the coat. See? And they've got a link to the Feynman lectures on physics. What? But I'm reading that. I know. So is Vogue now. Look, you're carrying it in the photo. Why do they care what I'm reading? Oh, please. Look, Elena, celebrities like Ford, they always figure it out in life. But do you, for whom life seems to rarely work out? The smart girl. The independently successful girl. Yes, in movies they get the guy. But in real life? It's a lot harder than it looks. Here, the world has the beginning of a fairy tale. The smart girl gets the hot guy, who's not quite so stupid after all. They're riveted. According to them, you're dating one of the most famous men in the world. And that means all eyes are on you. I mean... Until you release this. Or he does. Just enjoy the fact that you've caused one of physics' densest books to trend in a fashion magazine. You think people are buying the book because of that? They seem to be. It's currently in the most sold-on Amazon nonfiction. That's bizarre. That's celebrity. It's ridiculous. And it will be over soon. Don't worry. Still, fun while it lasts? No? No. This is why I'm an English professor and you're not. You physicists have no head for drama. Becky? What if I didn't refute it? Sorry? What if I went with it? What would that mean? You'd probably sell a lot more Richard P. Feynman. Why? But I didn't explain. For the first time in my career, I did something for which I had limited research. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Okay. We can keep up this routine. Oh, no. Dr. Caring, <clears throat> with one condition. Dr. Caring? Hmm? We've arrived. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Do you know which way to set? I do. It's a straight shot and then... Elena Caring? Uh, never mind. Yes, Bibi Thomas, Ford's assistant. We're all thrilled to have you here. Huge day ahead, so we should move quickly. Is that everything you've got? I... Y yes? You can pull around back! Wow, you pack light. Great. Follow me. If you had told me ten days ago I would be flying to Hollywood to consult on a studio film, I would have balked. If you had told me 10 days ago that in exchange for my consultancy and the optioning of my book, I would have to fake date the movie's lead, I would have called security. But on October 13th, after a long flight from Boston Logan and what felt like an as long drive across LA, here I was, pretending this was normal, pretending I liked Ford, all in exchange for my book being optioned and a consultant position on the film. I wouldn't be associated with a bad movie, I had told Ford. That was my condition. Take it or leave it. He took it. In the nearly two weeks since the story had broken, the interest in Ford Hamilton and my fake relationship had not abated. Looks like we're in. Elena, Elena. Does anyone have an answer? I'll repeat it. How do the potential energy U of the block Earth system and the kinetic energy K of the block at point C compare to those at point A? Anyone? Kayla, yes? Dr. Caring, uh, well, yes, Kayla? Okay, is it true you're dating Ford Hamilton? <sighs> the answer is B, 
The potential energy of the block Earth system. I was now convinced Ford was right. Like it or not, this wasn't going away. As I arrived on set, I still thought I might be able to do something meaningful. The ridiculous dating charade aside. It took five minutes for that feeling to disappear. Ford's been in the chair since five. He'll meet us at his trailer when he's finished. Um, this is your call sheet. Alicia Graves as Maleva, John Rabel as Eddington, Ford, his full name is Ford Bartholomew Hamilton. I know, I know, he hates it, but Ford doesn't have control over what goes on the call sheet. That's why you don't piss off the office PA. Sorry, uh, PA? Production assistant. Did Ford piss him off? Her, and no. I don't, I don't know, maybe. I mean, she wants to be a writer. Oh. So... (sighs) They're temperamental. Think they're penning the next Chinatown as we speak. In reality, they're writing screenplays loosely inspired by their own lives. And when I say loosely, I don't mean it. Uh, we start filming today at noon. No, no, John. John, do not cut me off. You said you'd give me a little bit of leeway here. I have the studio breathing down my neck because of the dailies. No, Ray Rabiner is calling the shots here. But that's why he's freaking out. I heard the project's already over budget. It's week one of filming. (laughs) Already? People seem tense. Yeah, the Valley has a shortage of Lexapro. I meant on set. Is it all going well here? Of course. Oh, here we are. This is a trailer? This is a trailer for one of the world's biggest movie stars. Yeah, come on in. David, Ford's assistant, texted. They'll be here in a minute. Um, take a seat. I thought you were Ford's assistant. Oh, I'm Ford's second assistant. Right. I deal with his travel schedule, his press tours, his wardrobe, that kind of thing. David deals with his schedule and handles his day-to-day. And who deals with everything else? That would be his third assistant, Kelly. You'll meet her. Um, blonde, short hair, looks like a little like a pit bull. Right. I had entered a parallel universe. Suddenly, I was nervous to see Ford Hamilton, to feel the creeping sense of being out of my depth here, with the foreboding dread that production wasn't going at all well. What's the chair? Sorry? The the chair? You said Ford's been in the chair all morning? Oh, right, yes, the hair and makeup chair. He's been there since 5. A.M.? Yeah, I mean, between you and me, he looks nothing like Einstein. Oh, they're almost here. I'm going to get out of your hair, leave you two alone to say hello, and go for it. Oh, no, you don't have to. I prepared myself to be calm, to be cool, to be, if necessary, distant and aloof. But when the door opened... (laughs) Hello to you two. I couldn't help it. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Don't. Don't what? Don't stop on account of my feelings. I've suffered far worse than you mocking me. I'm not, I'm not mocking you. Are you sure? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You're not. I am. Uh-huh. I wasn't. Your hair? It's a wig. Your nose? A prosthetic. Your shirt? My own. I don't think they had Pabst Blue Ribbon beer in the 1930s. I wouldn't know. And here I was thinking you were the expert. On theories, not... Period discrepancies? Trivialities. And on that subject, what's going on here? What do you mean? People seem panicked. It's an expensive shoot. We're already over budget. And my book option? Yeah, I'm... it's... What are you doing? Taking a little of this stuff off. You know, you could have worn something like this. Worn something like what? This. When? When you came to shadow me at Harvard, then none of this would be necessary. (laughs) I could have worn this. Yes. A false nose and an inch of makeup? Yes. I could have dressed as the exact replica of a dead man, of a man you've written a book on, followed you around for days, and people wouldn't have found that, what do you say, interesting? Well, I... I can only imagine what that says about the company you keep. That's not what I meant. I meant you could have tried harder to not have been recognized. That's all. Don't backtrack now. And I wouldn't have had to fly here to... to rescue your career. Rescue my career? I'm giving yours a lift. That I didn't want. But that you desperately need. If that's what you think... That is what I think. Then maybe it would be better if we just call the whole thing off. Yeah, maybe. Great. Well, good. Fine. I'll just get my stuff and leave. Four. 
Be decent. Who is that? Ray Rabiner, the... Director, and... I've got Glenn Fedora from Deadline here. <sighs> Shit. I'll just check he's decent, Glenn. I didn't have time to brief her. Can we do it later? Ford, the studio needs this. Ray, are we getting started? Just a second. What's going on? Elena Caring, I'm Ray Rabiner, director. Glad to have you here. So, the studio invited the press to drum up a little interest in the film. I didn't know you'd be here. She doesn't have to be. Glenn's already aware. Look, why don't we do this? Stay to say hello. You're, you're consulting on the film, after all. Then we'll figure out a way to get you out of here. We hadn't decided on a plan. We hadn't decided on a story. And yet, there we were, in a room with a reporter, with nothing off the record. Seated as far away from one another as two middle schoolers at a dance. When did you get in? This morning. Nice, nice. Direct flights? From Boston's Logan. Great airport. Chase Lounge. Right. Six-hour flight? Seven. Seven? Really? And you made that trip twice already, Ford? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. Wasn't that sweet of him? He couldn't stay away. Is that right? Well, you know, uh, Elena gets nervous with the press. Sure. I was just trying to put her mind at ease. She's a little fragile. Understandably. Though I would have bounced back quickly either way. Maybe. Who will want to wait and see? Well, look, I'm glad we're all here. Glenn, Elena not only wrote the book on the film's subject matter, she's actually consulting on the project. Ford, Glenn's here for the interview. And, and Glenn, as a reminder, the studio is hoping for him. Puff piece, I know. I wouldn't say that. Ray, I've done this for years. I know how to spin an interview for damage control. I damage control? No, not damage control. Interest. Heat. Shall we begin? Do you want to step outside? Happily. Wait! I'm sorry. Actually, since you're here, I'm wondering if you shouldn't stay. Stay? For the interview. I mean, the world is clamoring. Who is this researcher of our fantasy? Professor. Fantasy? I mean, Ray, respectfully, while the profile on Ford is great, you're great, Ford, but this, this right here... This is how you'll get your publicity. What do you think? Um, well... Um, um, well... well. Great! I love that energy. I'll start out with a softball. How did you two meet? Gosh, I... Well, we... I don't quite remember the exact moment. Moments? Interaction? Great. Two minutes in, and we were already in a blind panic. Did I really want my name and my book associated with this? Look, I don't know if we need to really go into it. It was sort of fleeting. Meaningful, but fleeting, if you know what I mean. We sounded ridiculous. Glenn agreed. Not... Really? Could you give some, uh, any details? Well, it was in... August. August? Right. We were at, uh... We were in the, um... Uh, where exactly were we? Uh, well, I mean, it's your school, babe. You're more able to recall the name of that particular building. Why don't you tell it, sweetie? Don't you think? Um, uh, well, I... I looked up at Ford, hoping he might save me. But he was sitting there, staring at me, smug as anything. Even under his caking of makeup, I could still see his movie star looks, just visible underneath the surface. Good luck, he seemed to say. I'll enjoy watching you flounder for once. Glenn Figueroa held his pen expectantly. Ray Rabiner bounced his knee, filled with nervous energy. Ford raised an eyebrow. Fine. He wanted me to take control? I would. May he rue the day. You're right. I'm sorry. I do remember it. Perfectly. So, Glenn, I'm a professor in the physics department at Harvard, right? 
Right. All esoteric stuff, relativity, the concept of Spinor. Do you know what I mean? No. Well, <laughs> neither did Ford. Isn't that sweet? And that's why the department approached me. Morrison, he's the department chair, he said, Look, Elena, I know it will be a huge imposition. I know there's probably nothing, nothing you'd want to do less. But there's a Hollywood actor. Well, actually, at first, he said actress. He got confused. <laughs> Who's feeling a bit insecure in his new lead. Did he say insecure? No, you're right. Maybe not. Yeah, I didn't think it was insecure. Overwhelmed? Out of his depth? Unprepared? I don't know exactly. And he said, because you're one of the more talented members of the department. Oh, to me, he said, uh, available. Available, definitely. Will you take some time out of your day and allow him to shadow you? Well, Glenn, of course I was furious. I mean, you know, wouldn't you be? I have to be honest with you. I'm not swayed by the whole Hollywood thing. I find it a little classless and, frankly, cheesy. So I met up with Ford. Oh, I remember this part. May I? Please. And, of course, she comes in all tough, a little scary, a little mean. But, you know, after a little while, I realized she was only pretending. See, the thing about Elena is that she's a huge romantic comedy fan. What? what? I know. Quotes on the wall. A real live, laugh, love girl. I promised I wouldn't say. But it's cute. And, you know, I played Dr. Vega in Empire 3. So halfway through the day, I find her in her office, and there I find her standing... Sitting. Holding a poster of me. A, a picture. Begging me to sign it. Asking. I, I was asking for my niece. And so from that moment on, we moved along. What? Happily? Yeah, happily. It's been two months, and they've been, uh... A complete fantasy. Absolutely. That's the right word for it. Yep. Definitely. Well, that is, uh... Great! Great! We have ten more minutes. Could you describe your first date? <sighs> <laughs> that story about Mateos, I love it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, no, that was fun. Can I call you if I need anything else? Of course. What a couple. Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, we agree. You two did all that. Yep. yep. Huh. Can I show you out, Glenn? Absolutely, absolutely. Stay cool. S <laughs> right. See ya. Bye. I didn't fawn over I you. I didn't discuss Into my insecurities. Into romantic comedies. As if I ever Please. sought you out to spend time I with you beyond ridiculous. professional. I look ridiculous. I look stupid. Like, I would actually do any of that. I would ever be that pathetic. I'm smarter than that. God. Oh, I was surprised we got noticed. I was trying to be discreet. Sense of entitlement astounds me. You're here to boost the film's credibility, not undercut it. Boost, not resurrect. You lied to me. About what? You said they were uncomfortable with you playing Einstein. Not that the film is in chaos. How is any association with this picture supposed to help me? It's not in chaos. Try something new. Don't lie to me. Uh, all right. It's got less support than I thought. The picture, the script, my casting, the whole thing. And that interview didn't help. No. They want this to be an Oscar pick, not a throwback to Team Beat. I lend you credibility. I doubt it. Most people don't believe you could spell PhD. Well... Maybe. But that's not enough. Not enough as I thought it would be. Oh, please. What? Don't be a defeatist. What? You're one of the most famous people in the world. The studio needs you, whether they like it or not. Uh, you don't know Hollywood. No, but I know sunk costs. They need this to work. As much as you do. As much as I do now. And it won't work like this. Yeah, I know. The script is bad. You've read it? On the plane. It feels hollow. Artificial. Yeah. It needs an expert hand. They won't pay for another draft. No. They won't. But you have me. Okay, everyone. This is just a read-through. Alicia. Or should I say, Mileva? Yes? You're stunning, you're gorgeous, you're talented. Right. Just read from page 10 to 11. 
Four. Oh, yeah, got it. Do we need everyone here? Well, Danny's the writer. And Elena? She's consulting. I don't know if... Oh, but you asked me last night if I would stay, babe. Right, okay. So, you two. Ford, Alicia, I mean. It's a drama, but for all intents and purposes, this scene is the meat cute okay? Play it that way. Yeah. Understood. We'll cut after hallway. Everyone else, quiet. Uh, baby, are you taking notes? Yep. Great. Okay. Ready, you two? And action. It was the day after Deadline had come to set, but the article detailing Ford's and my relationship had not yet been released. I dreaded what it would say about me. 34-year-old physicist, an odd choice of rebound after Ford Hamilton's divorce from model Rebecca Lang. Did Ford have to choose brains or beauty? Ugh. And now there was no going back. I would no longer be the rumored girlfriend, but the girlfriend. And for all the validity to the argument that no matter what I did, papers would report it this way anyway, I had now willingly tied my future to Ford's, to this movie, a movie that seemed as shaky as ever. Oh no, you must have the wrong room. Wrong. There's another wing for the typist. I'm not a typist, I'm a student. Choppy dialogue, indistinguishable character motivations, schlocky scenes. You're... you can't be. Excuse me? Ray Rabiner, the director, had insisted on further rehearsals with Alicia Graves, playing Einstein's wife. But they weren't helping. Had the success of the film felt more likely, had my name not been so prominently tied to it, I wouldn't even be here, watching. Instead, I would be in my room working on the myriad of papers, grants, and research assignments that desperately required my attention. And according to Becky, the TA I had tapped to teach two of my sessions bores me to tears. And I'm teaching Proust this semester. When are you going to be back? Next week. Saturday morning? Afternoon, maybe? Your class will cry of relief. Everything is going well there? No, not really. The script is a mess. I meant between you and Ford. How's pretty boy? It's a fake relationship, Becky. For now. What? (gasps) Holy cow! I just saw a bug. I had no delusions about Ford Hamilton, nor any supposed attraction between us. I was here to burnish my reputation, secure my name. Down that hallway. Don't follow me. And cut which, at this exact moment, seemed a near impossibility. Well, what are our reactions? Anything? Anything? Uh, it's, it's not working. It's hollow, pedantic, boring. I think some of that's in the delivery. The script needs work, too, Danny. Danny is the... Screenwriter. Right. Ray, you approved the script. You liked my words. Well, scripts are a blueprint. That's it. Damn. Ford, enough. We'll fix it, okay? How? We'll try different blocking. Blocking? But this this requires more of a change than blocking. I've got to play him... Differently. Radically so. Excuse me? Your Einstein and the real Einstein are night and day. Oh, you've met? I've studied him. Which leaves your opinion qualified to address the facts on the page. May I, Ray? Well? Ford does have to play him in a different way. Because Einstein was nothing like how he's written. Hey, Ray, I thought she was here to help assess the accuracy of the science. This isn't her forte. It's Elena. What? She. I'm Elena. I don't think we need her consulting here. No matter who she's dating. You are together? Yes, but that Einstein's shouldn't... characterization does need to shift. But I'll get back to that. The problem right now is Maleva. She's written entirely the wrong way. Look, when Maleva enrolled for the diploma course to teach physics and mathematics, she was the only woman in her group of six students and the fifth woman to enter that section. She would have had to have been extraordinarily talented to overcome the restrictions on the admission of women. 
and Einstein knows it. Well, not at first. Not when he enters the university, maybe, but by the time they meet, he would. Don't you see? Not really, Dr. Kering. What she did, her presence there, I think it's hard for us to understand now how extraordinary that would be. It's not that there were a few women scientists. There were no women scientists. A woman capable of keeping up with the likes of Einstein? He and his colleagues would be aware. He wouldn't be ignorant of her. Nor would he assume she didn't belong there. He's a good person. Yes, they get divorced. Yes, he ends up with his first cousin. But for Einstein, the brain always mattered far more than the body it inhabited. He wouldn't underestimate her. No. He'd observe her. But someone needs to scrutinize her. I agree. Another character. There's a a shyness to Einstein. An awareness there. And when they do meet, the scene should read like the repartee between two equals. But at first he takes a back seat. It's others who underestimate her. Yes. I like it. You do? Ford, what do you think? I think he does underestimate her. Well... But I think he's too smart to admit it. Sure, he's observant, but also... What? Deep down, he's immediately attracted to her. I think that's better. A more pensive character, a more matched tete-a-tete. Danny? Yeah? Can you get us new pages on that? Well, I... Great, let's break for lunch. Tuna milk, bacon burger, grilled cheese... I'm, I'm the tuna melt. Here you go. How much is it? You're on set, girl. What does that mean? It, it's free. No, she's a professor of physics. I don't know. Is there a difference? Maybe? <clears throat> uh, mind if I sit here? I thought you ate in your trailer. We're dating. Sorry? I would sit with you if we were dating. So, may I? Okay. Where's your lunch? What do you mean? Don't you want more than a smoothie? Uh, Oh, this isn't a smoothie. It's got 22 different ingredients. You know, pork, vegetables, dairy. What? Oh, you're joking. Pork in a smoothie? I wouldn't put it past Hollywood. Jesus, is that a tuna mouth? I find them delicious. (laughs) What year were you born? 1953? People love tuna mouths. Uh Uh-huh. They have a unique flavor, Mm -hmm. which is... (laughs) Okay, they are disgusting. (laughs) You think? But they do a good job of keeping people away. Ah, so is that your M.O.? Usually. Like Maleva. Maleva had reason to be defensive. No one took her seriously. Until Einstein. Sure, but he dumped her anyway. And took credit for her contributions. Yeah. What? Sorry? You didn't like me jumping in? No. Do you agree with Danny? No. No, I actually... I appreciated your help. Really? Don't act so surprised. I told you I liked your book, remember? Vaguely. The script needs all the help it can get, I'm afraid. It's trial and error. Everything is. Is Danny always so... Arrogant? Your words, not mine. (laughs) Well, he's a writer. Twice in two days? That's supposed to mean something. (laughs) Look, it's it's like this. The only people more thin-skinned than actors? Writers. No more successful actors. (laughs) But writers are up there. Definitely. So, you changed the script. Are you uh, going to watch filming? Of course not. Oh. I mean, I I have a lot of work to do. Um, And filmmaking is what? Play? Well, not play exactly. Just not my work. Einstein was a poet. Not professionally. Is profession all you set your store by? No. Not really. Even he thought there were two ways to express the same thing. I... What? Disagree? You're leaving? Gotta prep. And need something real. Fake as it is, acting takes it out of me. Ford, I I didn't mean... I I, I get it. See you around. The study ignored four variables which necessitate a change to the, the, 
Two hours later, I found myself working in my hotel room. BB had found one 10 minutes from set, a miracle in a city not known for walkability. I should have been working, but found myself struggling to concentrate. The processes? Despite all I had to do, I found myself drawn inexplicably to... Going again. Quiet on set. Quiet. Please. Going again. BB? Elena, is everything okay? Why wouldn't it be? Ford said you couldn't make it to watch. You know, he seemed disappointed, actually. Oh, did his ex-wife usually watch him act? Rebecca? Oh, God, no. He's exceptionally private anyway. Usually. Well, I made it, after all. They're doing their final take. You can stand with me. Ready and action. Move, please. I think you have the wrong idea. I wasn't laboring under the delusion that this environment would be any different than my last three. No women in physics gets taken seriously. No, about me. I wanted to ask you about your theory. About the movement of the train. Uh, You have a question about my work. Of course. About what else would it be? And cut. Well done, you two. I think we got it. Great. Already? How long has she been here? Who? Elena. Excuse me. Do you see what I'm saying? She's strong. She's smart. Sharper is better. Totally. Dr. Carey. Can we just settle on Elena? I thought you preferred Dr. Carey. My friends call me Elena. We're friends? We're supposed to be dating. Maybe it's a pet name. Let's step outside. So? So? You came after all. I finished work early. Look, you can admit it, you couldn't stay away. (laughs) I wanted to see how it went with the new lines. And? Better. Yeah? Much better. Really? Look over here! Wait, Elena, what's Elena. going on? Is it real? Elena! I think... Elena, uh, how I think it's the it? deadline, Uncle. Here, hey, stay close how'd to you me. Do it? About the movie? Over here. Is it real? Wow, look at him. Elena, how'd nope. you do it? Barely gets a mention. It? It's all about our relationship. Elena. Hey, Ford, chemistry. Elena. Uh, here, but I'm in physics. Wait. Elena, we should stay. Use this to our advantage. I thought you wanted press about the film. Not about us. This clearly isn't working. Uh, uh, kiss me. What? Uh, A quick one. You can pull away right after. Absolutely not. How dare you? Do you want to convince the world of us or not? The world believes us already. Why should I have to... Have to... Stop using that tone with me. And could you stop looking like that? They'll be saying we've had a level's quarrel next. I... I... You know what? We don't need to do this. What? Let's, let's, let's get out there. Hey, don't... I can walk. I'm not asking you to walk. Run! Give me your key. You could ask. Your hotel key. Jesus, calm down. You don't want to get near them. Then when I try to get you away... Hurry, hurry! Okay. They can't get in. Shh. How can they get into a hotel? The bar downstairs is open to the public. I'm sure they walked right in. But to know where I'm staying? Yeah, that's what happens. What do you mean? Look, it's your whole life. When you become, you know, famous, no one thinks you have a right to it anymore. Boundaries, lines, privacy that a normal person would be entitled to, it all goes out the window. I can't believe you live like this. All the time. But you won't have to. When we, you know, break up, it will eventually go away. Will it? Yeah. And how long will we have to continue to keep up the charade in the meantime? Uh, I don't know. End of production? Maybe the premiere? Look, as soon as I date someone else, this disappears. You'll have your life back. Your privacy. I... Wait. Are they gone? I doubt it. Is it such a big deal? What do you mean? Article, photo, international intrigue. What's another one? When this is all over, I'll have my people issue a denial. I'll say we made it up. (laughs) I think that might be worse. (laughs) You might be right. Yeah, probably. You know how many girlfriends of mine have been fake? All of them. 
Really? <laughs> Minus three. Close. I did date Tennessee Marbles. I... Don't pretend you don't know who that is. <laughs> and Rebecca, of course. Well, you didn't date. You were married. One usually leads to another. Was that... I can't remember the last time I dated anyone. Real or fake. I don't know if you noticed, but sociability isn't really my strong suit. I may have noticed when you were showing me around. I was rude, wasn't I? Short, maybe. I was humiliated. Sure, you're famous and all, but in my field, I want to be well-known, respected. And it was such a sign I wasn't, not by my department, anyway. No one would ask Einstein to show anyone around. I was angry, and I took it out on you. I'm sorry. Don't be. I had a chip on my shoulder being there in the first place. Really? No one likes to be known as stupid. Or have to prove to their studio they should be taken seriously. You know I don't think you're stupid, right? Could have fooled me. I don't think you're lacking in sociability. Well, you're firm. But it's refreshing. Thanks. Do you think they're gone? What? Uh, oh, yeah. Probably. I'll get out of your hair. Oh. My fault, anyway. I hope you have a nice evening, Elena. Yeah. You too. Hi, Ford. Hi. Hey. Hey, how are you? Hey. Jesus Christ, I'm so, ugh, stupid. Everything is the same. Okay. It was our second week of shooting, and to my surprise, filming seemed to be going better. People seemed optimistic. All but for, have you seen? Ellen. The movie's lead. In here. Jesus. Hey. What are you doing? Shh. Ow. Okay, okay. Let go of me. Did you know about this? Know about what? Is that page six? Yes. Okay, you don't... Just listen. Rumors abound from the set of Einstein where Ford Hamilton is supposedly dating Harvard professor Dr. Elena Carey. The two met when Ford visited Harvard to do research for his role. But our sources say it's not meant to be. Elena and Ford are icy. Someone familiar with the production said, it might even be a bid, a bid for a little extra attention for the film. They don't seem happy at all. We'll wait and see, but call us interested in this potential controversy. Who leaked it? It's speculation. Someone familiar with the production, what does that mean? Leaked means someone who knows we're faking it. There are only two people who do and they're in this room. And Becky. Did she leak it? No. No. She's at Harvard, right? The first story breaks there. And now you're here and this story breaks? Becky did not leak it. Can you really be sure? Just because in Hollywood no one's ever had a friend that wouldn't sell them out for three minutes of fame. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Hollywood's a big evil town. Original. It wasn't you? No. How could you think that of me? Prolonged association with a beautiful Harvard physicist benefits my career. But you? Maybe you've already got what you needed. Your studio still owes me contracts for the option. And then when you get them? You have more incentive to call it off than I do. If I did, I wouldn't leak it to the press. I'd tell you. Do you? Want to call it off? I... Did I? Yes, I had come in expecting the worst. But the script was improving, and set was proving more interesting than I could have believed. That said, I was neglecting my work at Harvard. The contracts on my book option would supposedly be done this week. I should have been looking for an off-ramp, and yet, I liked being taken seriously. On set. And though I'd never admit it to him, the allure of being Ford Hamilton's girlfriend had extended into my work in physics, too. Twice since I'd arrived, I'd been asked to represent the department at a conference or event or gala in replace of my department chair. Guggenheim, Richard Hart Gala, Harvard's physics club co-chair, they've all emailed me asking if I'll be there. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. You're an elegant too. For? 
What? My genes? No. Ten female scientists forgotten by history. Marge? Number two. Did I want to leave? I wanted normalcy back. My life off of someone else's news. But could more be gained from staying than leaving? Or was it better to cut and run? I... No. No? I see no need to call it off yet. Okay, good. So what do we do? You think they'll buy us after this? No, not unless we give them something else. Something else? No. No, 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 no. Yes. No. Yes. You're taking Ford Hamilton to the Guggenheim Awards dinner? I just said yes. In New York? Yes. Which you flew to? Don't make me say it. You know I don't agree. Which you flew to? On his private jet. Yes. Staying together? Same room? No. We're sleeping separately. Adjoining rooms. So the potential's there. My god. You're bringing him into your world. Not really. And you said you weren't going to. This isn't my world. It's a dinner for the most notable scientists this year. Not for actors playing them in a movie. Yes, but I don't go to these things. Oh, I know. And when I do go, I arrive late, leave early, avoid mingling, and I'm usually in bed by 9.15. Don't tell me. It's too depressing. It's not depressing. It's healthy. Sad. It's just sad. Becky, you know me. I do. Which is why I'm wondering why you're doing this. I told you. Someone blabbed to page six. I know. Like it matters. What do you mean? Please, Elena. There's about as much truth in the entirety of the post as fits on a Snapple cap. And when it comes to celebrities... A source close to the production... Could have been anyone. You could just stage a kiss and resolve the whole thing. Do you want to go with Ford? No, no way. I'm fully prepared for the evening to be embarrassing. Why? This isn't his crowd. He's a Hollywood movie star. He brings in box office numbers that are the size of several large countries. Everyone's his crowd. Listen, can I call you later? I'm in the middle of getting ready. What are you wearing? I brought a black shift dress. No, 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 no. What? The one you wore to H.R. Martin's funeral. Maybe. Oh my god. It's all I brought. I wasn't prepared to dress up. You can't wear that dress. It's Ford Hamilton. It's my event. Aha. So you admit it. Becky. How long do you have until you have to leave? I don't know. 20 minutes? Okay, so it's an emergency. Hang on. Who's that? That him? It shouldn't be. Elena, it's Bibi. Hi. Hi. I wasn't sure you had anything to wear, so I had the third assistant get you some samples. Thank God. Sorry, is somebody in here? No, just me. Okay, um, so I got this Chanel, this Gucci, this Miu Miu. Would you like to try them? I'll try all three. Oh, I was coming over to... I figured it'd be easier. I was going to pick you up from your room. Meeting in the lobby's fine, really. Well, I guess we're here now. Wow. What? I... What? You look... Ridiculous? I wouldn't say that. Overdressed? Absurd? Stunning. You look stunning. Oh. Well, it's the dress. All credit really goes to BB. It's not the dress. Um, Shall we? Of course. After you. Thanks. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. You're fidgeting. I'm not. You're going to wrinkle your dress. That would be a tragedy. I've been to a million of these things. Scientific awards? Awards. Award shows, galas, the whole thing. Do you know what I've learned? There is no end to Hollywood self-flattery? Yes. And the more you look the part, the better you feel. I don't need to look the part. This is my world. Ah. What? Nothing. No. It's me. Sorry? It's me you're nervous about. You're worried about bringing me? No. Because you think I can't hack it? No. Or because you think it will be too smart for me? Oh, please. Come on. You've doubted my intelligence before. I don't recall. Although I don't think this crowd will be talking relativity over canapes. You'd be surprised. I don't like going to these things on my own. Let alone bringing a fake date with someone who isn't... scientific. Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Biden... 
Caroline Kennedy. What? All people I've had dinner with and conversed with. About? AI, the border, nuclear energy. You, how? Sometimes I don't think you realize, Elena. I'm a celebrity. Despite what I'd said to Ford, I was nervous about the whole thing. Champagne? Thank you. Just relax. I am relaxed. We're here to get our photographs taken. Mingle. Keep up the charade. Now I'm wishing we'd called it off. Say hi to a few people. Talk. Laugh. I never laugh at these things. There's no pressure. We're not here to be crowned prom king and queen. I never went to my prom. No date? No interest. That surprises me. Shut up. Believe it or not, I know how to mingle. That's not a skill. Yes, it is. You'll see. Here, take a target. You look like you're starving. I... Thanks. The Guggenheim Awards were one of the most prestigious in all of academia. I had never been invited, never attended. And now, here I was, not arriving late, not leaving early, but arriving on time and carting around a... Good God. Are you Ford Hamilton? Celebrity. The Ford Hamilton? So rude. What? She said so good. Ah. She loves broccoli. So, are you? Uh, I am. (laughs) Amazing. Perhaps I shouldn't have been surprised. As Becky said, Ford sold out more movies than most people had pennies. But despite the attention, he was... Alexander! Alexander Brishnikov, Yale grad, studying paramyxoviruses at MIT. You won't believe it. I'm Ernest Dubolt, <coughs> Dean of Columbia. I got to Guggenheim in... Two- 2013. <laughs> nice to meet you. Pleasure. Unfazed. Ernest! Alexander, I want to introduce you to... Oh my God, are, are you Ford Hamilton? <laughs> Guilty. I loved Midnight Run. It's not my lie to tell. (laughs) 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 Nice to meet you. Alexander Brishnikov. Huge, huge fan. And you are? Elena Caring. Dr. Elena Caring. Of Harvard. I know. You know Paul Brown? Yes, he was one of my advisors. Uh, Look, don't hold it against him, but when you graduated, he sent me your PhD. Paul Brown did? He's an old friend. We go way back. Undergrad. Harvard? Princeton. It seems to always be one of the three. (laughs) Quite. Tell me, have there been any advances on your work on string theory? Yes, some. Anything you'd be willing to share? Well, I... She'd be happy to. It's amazing. And ask about her book, too. Book? On Maleva Marriage. It's a masterpiece. Elena? Yes. I'm going to get us a refill. What do you want? Scotch? Neat? <laughs> oh my god, fresh air. I know. Oh my god, how long were we there? <laughs> Three, four hours? It flew by. I had no idea. Alexander. He liked you. He liked you. When he said that thing about vaccines? I know. Crazy, I couldn't believe it. Please, I saw your face. What? You were laughing. I was not. Uh Uh-huh. I was not. Just do me a favor, okay? Okay. Never go into acting. Shut up. (laughs) Is this your car? That one. Charlie. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, your train. My what? Your dress. Here. Oh, just leave it. You don't care at all, do you? No, not really. So? So? What do you think? About the night? About me. Mingle is a skill. Ha, told you. I'm impressed. Finally. You don't care about my approval. You don't know what I care about. Well, don't let it get to your head. Ah, no can do. Anyway, I think they were all charmed because you were there with me. With you? Not with me with me. Photos should tell a different story. Us, side by side. Holding hands? Yeah. It's a good story. Is it? Is it what? Just a story. Hey, Mr. Hamilton, we're here. Yes, thanks, Charlie. Well, good night. Want to have a drink? 
<laughs> what? I never figured you'd be... What? Messy. This isn't messy. It's lived in. We've been here for eight hours. <laughs> you should see it after a few days. <clears throat> when you're on the road as much as I am, every place has got to become a home. So the coffee cup in your bathroom is a... Uh... Act of domesticity. Yes. <laughs> here. Cheers. Cheers. We're good at this now. Pretending. Fake dating. Is it pretending? What do you... No one's around. It's just you and me. Not everyone wants to sleep with you. No, I know. I've always had trouble with men aged 35 to 60 who identify as straight and Central and South America. <laughs> Not me. This isn't flirting? I'm method. I make no distinction between on and off screen. <laughs> You're really reading this? My book? <sighs> yeah, and a whole host of other things. To you, they probably seem elementary. Stephen Hawking, Carlo Rovelli. I... no. They don't. Elena? I... I've got to get some sleep. Good night. Good night. Holy shit. Are you okay? No! I don't know what you want from me! I've told you. Don't tell me. Show me! You tell me you love me. You tell me I matter to you. But you won't ask me to stay? What is this? Who am I to you? I can't do this anymore. I've got to go. Goodbye. Wait. I have to. Just shut up. Excuse me? What are you doing? What I should have done a long time ago. Ellen? Oh, shit. Yes? You awake? Obviously. Is anyone else in there? No. Because it sort of sounded like... Did you need something? We're leaving in 15. I wanted to see if you wanted coffee. No, I'm okay. You sure? Okay, uh, coffee, coffee black. black. How did you... Intellectuals are all the same. The flavor of the beans is diluted. Coffee is purest when... Yeah, I don't care. Great. Look, much fun as it is talking through this door. Can I just meet you downstairs? Of course. Just don't take too long. I promise, it's all downhill after that scene. <sighs> <laughs> Ugh. The morning after the Guggenheim Awards, Ford was teasing, Ford was affable, but he made no comment as to what I thought had almost happened last night. Elena. I... I've got to get some sleep. As a result, I did the same. Had it all been in my head? Had I misread the situation? Or worse, was that sort of thing so common for Ford Hamilton? Bringing a woman back to his room, sleeping with, or nearly sleeping with, any woman in his vicinity, that last night had been far from unique? Not worth commenting on at all? I couldn't tell which was worse. That Ford was possibly as undiscerning with women as I'd originally imagined, or that I cared. Whatever my thoughts on last night, it had worked, though. The New York Post, page six, Perez Hilton. All ran with the story. Ford Hamilton was caught canoodling Elena Kering at last night's Guggenheim Awards. Canoodling? That's what they say. Whatever the status of our real relationship, our fake relationship was, it seemed, back on track. Ford grew quieter and quieter as we approached L.A., and I made up my mind. I wouldn't confuse the two again. I was here for one more week. My book option should be finalized. We'd figure out how to end this, but we needn't convince our critics again. Ford and I might remain friends or allies or- Elena. Yes? Can I ask? Look, don't come to set today. What? Okay. Or not. Ford's order smarted. I was working on this film too. I belonged on set as much as he did. Well, perhaps not as much, but I wasn't going to stay away. I worked in physics. Men had always tried to tell me what to do. It didn't work in academia, and it wouldn't work here. Baby. Helena? What's going on? I thought Ford said you weren't coming today. Ray wanted me to stop by. Okay. 
So you want to tell me why everyone here is acting like somebody died? No one's acting like somebody died. What take is this? 35? 36, serious. Well, okay. It's Ford. What? It's the scene. What scene? Scene 102. Do you have sides? Here. We're shooting the one where he triumphs over his critics. 1919? When his general theory of relativity is... Yeah, confirmed experimentally during a solar eclipse, yeah. I like this scene. I know. I think he thinks he can't do it. Cut! Damn it, damn it, damn it! He's been like this all day. It's just not working. I think it is. Boy, I'm not, I just don't believe it when I say it, okay? We can get Danny to tweak it. It isn't that easy of a fix. I just... I need a bead. Ford, you can do this scene. I... Eleanor. Hey. Great. You're here for the show, too. No, Ford. Look, I need a bead. Ford. Ray. Okay. Everyone take ten. Take ten, everyone. Ford, I didn't... Not now. He asked you not to come? Yeah. Yeah. It's fear. That's all it is. Sorry? Fear that he's not good enough. Not really a dramatic actor. Not really this kind of leading man. It's just fear. Too bad, too. It's this sort of scene that could make him one of the greats. I don't need anything, B.B. Just give me a minute, please. It's not B.B. It's Elena. Can I... I don't mean to be rude, but can you go away? That's rude. Elena. Ford. Can you leave? Please. No. What do you want? I came to see how you were. Did you come to gloat? No. To mock? No. Because while I know you don't think much of my profession... That's not true. It's not always easy. I know that. Damn it, Elena. I didn't need an audience for this today. It's a hard scene. That doesn't mean it's impossible for you. I mean it. Thank you. But do you mind leaving? Please. No. You don't get to tell me what to do. Boy, do I know that's true. You don't think you're talented enough to do this scene? It strikes me as I do it that I don't actually give off the air of someone who has a keen grasp of relativity. Despite all that's been done to make me appear that way, am I talented enough? No. Part of acting is, is becoming the character you're trying to be. I can't become someone I don't understand and never really will in this scene. I see. Yeah. I knew you'd understand. You, above all people, know the difference between Einstein and my competency. You're right. I do. Great. Einstein believed, more than anything, that he was right about relativity. But you don't believe, no matter how well you perform, that you'll be deserving of the types of roles you really want. You don't believe in your own competency. He did. And I'm sorry, but that's just bullshit. What? When you walk into a room, for a second, for anyone who meets you, they become... They enter a different reality. Your reality. They're no longer a grip or a PA or a scientist or a director. They're they're noticed. They're listened to. By Ford Hamilton, the actor. For a moment when someone so significant gives them his full attention, the time of day, they feel important, admired, enjoyed. They feel like they matter in talking to you. I don't... You make people believe what they most want to believe. About themselves. You just need to give yourself the same sense of possibility. You can do the scene, Ford. You can and should play this part. I don't think you believe that. How do you know? Because obviously... I don't do that sort of thing to you. I don't... Come on, Elena. You don't think of me that way. How do you know? Well, do you? I'm not going to respond to a man attempting to solicit compliments from compliments when he does as much to every woman. I don't do what I do with you to every woman. Uh Uh-huh. I don't. Enough of that, okay? Enough of what? Pretending, obfuscating. I think I've made myself clear in, in, 
and not just pretending to like you. You don't give me the time of day. But it is pretend. Maybe. I... I don't flirt with people as a sport. I don't read the books or adopt the hobbies of women I don't care about. Hell, I don't invite people up to my room without... Is that what you think I do? I didn't know. Just try to sleep with women indiscriminately? You didn't try to... You didn't bring that up. Because the next day you acted like nothing happened. I wasn't going to... (laughs) You don't like me or take me seriously. Fine. But you don't have to bullshit me about how I make people matter when I clearly don't matter to you. That's not true. You're Ford Hamilton. You're a Hollywood icon. You can have any woman in the world. Evidently not. Everyone you look at thinks they're important to you. I don't want to be just another one of them when I'm starting to... When you're starting to... what? Nothing. When you're starting to... Care. About you. But you don't take me seriously. Ford, you don't take yourself seriously. I do. I'm just afraid of you. I'm terrified of you. Are you? Yes. Why? Your brain, for one thing. Because you don't care about the things other people do. Celebrity, fame. So I have no mask. It's just been me, trying to get to know you. Trying to see if you like me too. You don't invite every woman up to your room? Nuh-uh. Okay. I like you, Dr. Elena Carey. Mm. Wow. (laughs) It's better than it looks on screen. (laughs) I can't believe I caught you watching a marriage blush. Shut up. You read my book. Research. Yeah, me too. And for the record, I do take you seriously. And I like you, too. So when you told me you wouldn't teach remedial physics... I'm sure that was endearing. (laughs) It's very rare I get talked down to. You? I think when I saw you with your shirt off and... What? (laughs) (laughs) When you told me you'd read my book. You did when you didn't have to. Uh, Yeah, I did. Ford? Yeah? This is... You know, cute. (laughs) Shut up. But you do have an entire cast and crew waiting on you. Uh, Yep, I know. You want to watch? Do you want me to? Going again. Going again! And action. Look up at the sun. See it? Don't you see it? He's doing it. I know. It was you. No. It was in him already. I just... Shit. I've got a... Hello? Have you been checking your email? No. Why? Elena. What? Look, for a little while now, I thought this was going to help you. The invitations, the attention. It is. I think it was the canoodling. Someone put page six in every break room this morning. Hang on. What did you say? Just left it on the table. And I think at first I thought the association of Hollywood would be helpful, but now be more trivial. What? Or maybe... Not Be- just Becky, rumor. I can't hear you. Just heard. <sighs> Elena, B check your email. Morrison is thinking about removing one of my sections? Recently, my attention doesn't seem to have been given fully to the coursework I've been assigned to. I'm sorry, I... They're not taking me seriously. I think that... <gasps> what? My book option. What about it? The studio just wrote. I'm sorry to say that I think we're too far apart to close. Mr. Hamilton and Ray Rabiner do feel your contribution to the film has been incredibly helpful, but in discussions, both feel your consultancy is as far as that contribution needs to go? (gasps) No! He lied! He said he'd get it done! He knew it was a priority for me. Oh my god, oh my god, my job, my livelihood, at risk for... A consultant role. All but nothing. Well, what are you going to do? And cut. Cutting. Excellent, excellent. Ford, well done. Thank you. We're wrapped. Baby, you want hey. to... Hey. What is this? What is what? This email. What email? Mr. Hamilton and Ray Rabiner do feel your contribution to the film has been incredibly helpful, but in discussions... Ah, <sighs> shit. 
Eleanor. Both feel that your consultancy is as far as that contribution needs to go. I'm sorry. I thought you said the option was all but signed. It was. You lied to me. It's never all that simple. After I trusted you. I know, but... We had a deal. A deal? A deal. And now here I am getting shafted with my colleagues because we're dating. But fine. If I got the option too. Now I come to find out that none of this is a boon. It's all a blow to my career. What the hell, Ford? So that's the truth. Excuse me? I get it now. Get what? Everything. Every conversation, the book option, the deal. Yeah, you promised. After all that, you're just like everybody else. Excuse me? Sure, you're smarter, less Hollywood, less obviously angry. But the end game is still clear. What are you... You only like me if you can get something from me. What? That's my appeal. Ford. I'm angry. Yeah, I think you lied, but I meant what I said. (laughs) I feel... What do you want, Elena? A check? A credit? Another picture in Time Magazine? Fuck you. What? How dare you? It's always something. No, it's not. If that's what you think of me, honestly, I don't need this. I don't need you. Excuse me, everyone? What do you... To the source, close to set, if you want your next scoop, here it is. The whole relationship, Ford and I, was completely fake. Every photo, every touch, was just part of a deal. A bargain Ford and I came up with after paparazzi believed we were together. But it's off now. The truth is, it was never more than a game of pretend. None of it was real. I can't believe you just did that. Can't you? You get your wish, Ford. I don't want anything from you. Don't contact me ever again. Ravener's new film, Theories, hits theaters this week, with Ford Hamilton still in Oscar contention. Earlier this month, he was spotted out with his latest co-star, Annie Winters, at Carbone in New York. The two sparked rumors of a new relationship, the first since Ford split earlier this year to Harvard professor Eleanor Herring. Mm-hmm. Rumors abound that Caring and Hamilton were simply pretending to date this in Entire time. We were lied to. Bamboozled. Hey. Morning. Morning. Scone? Becky. What? It's cranberry orange. No, thank you. You know I don't eat before noon. Right, right. What are you working on? I'm revising David's research. He made a mess of it. Wrong theories? Wrong everything. Which one is he? Tall and fat or short and thin? Becky. What? Did you need something? I was just wondering if you wanted to talk. About... Elena. Everything. No, I don't. It's all... It's nothing. There's nothing to say. Isn't there? You're going through a breakup. No, not really. It was months and months ago. And we were never together. The whole thing was fabricated. Was it? Fleeting feelings and what was otherwise a few weeks of pretend. You were dating a Hollywood icon. You told each other you had feelings for one another and then ended it by you spilling the beans. Which every paper got wind of. It's already old news. We hope. But that's not the point. Whatever you said or didn't say, it's your heart that concerns me, not the story. But it was all a story. It can be upsetting, Elena. It's not. Are you sure? Yeah, really. And even a part of me was reeling. I don't have time for hurt feelings. It was stupid and sophomoric, and I'm glad it's over. I convinced Morrison to let me keep both of my sections. How did you do that? I said everything they'd read was hearsay, and assuming otherwise could be considered discrimination. What the papers print about me in my personal life is of no concern to this department's faculty. My research is all fine. A section or two of 201 fell behind, but that was all flexible. As soon as I finish this... Has he ever called? No. I thought he would call. What's he going to say, Becky? He made it perfectly clear that it was all just a blip. What did I think? That that some Hollywood star and I would hit it off and we'd... Fall for each other? He was as jaded as they say. As quick to assume... The worst? The worst about me. It sounds a little to me like you are both afraid. No. No? This, this stuff, this is all real. It's what I'm meant to be doing, working on. What happened in L.A. between Ford and I, it was all pretend. 
We've just reached the end of the scene. Are you sure? Becky, he showed his true colors. There's no world in which Ford Hamilton ends up with anyone normal, let alone with someone like me. In truth, the transition from Hollywood back to Harvard had not been easy. Yes, I had gotten my classes back, and teaching had resumed its usual monotony now that I was no longer the focus of Hollywood's fascination. And what is donut theory? Can someone explain? Yes, Priya? Yeah, I don't. Uh, can I go to the bathroom? (sighs) But there was an issue. Anything else? Great. Dr. Caring. Yes? You'll be our lead at next month's conference? I... yes. Good. Good to see you back where you belong. Fiction and physics don't go very well together, do they? I'm sorry? (laughs) You and Ford Hamilton. I can't believe we all believed it. I had exposed our big lie, but now I had to reckon with the real truth. I was no longer the woman I had been before meeting Ford Hamilton. Not really. For the first time in my adult life, I had done something. Bold, different, exciting, sexy. I had acted, for once, like the main character in my own movie. Ford Hamilton was once again just a guy on the screen. And yet here, at Harvard, it felt like I was back behind the scenes. As if I wasn't there. I can't believe we believed it. I swear the men at the school. So, what are you going to do? I don't know. That was too much. Eden Books in Cambridge reached out to have me do a talk on my Maleva book. Elena, that's huge! I mean, it's no option. And it came out, what, a year ago now? Doesn't matter. It'll be three people and a sad cheese plate, but I thought I ought to do it. You should. I'm sure it's only happening because of Ford. Nonsense. You wrote the book. Yeah. It's a good thing. Promise. I... Thank you, Becky. Elena? Yeah? You don't need a celebrity. I resolved to not let my life pass me by. I could affect small changes, if not give myself the full Hollywood treatment. Where is this place? Up ahead, there. And it starts when? At 7.30. Aren't we a little early? What did I say? I know, I know. Be on your team. Ah, Dr. Kering. Elena. Nancy Eden. Welcome. Nancy, this is Becky Paban. A pleasure. Would you like to head to the back? It's a little early, but if you want to prepare... Perfect. The book talk, I knew, was just a small thing. But I was grateful for a chance to showcase my work in a forum no lawyer could take away. Maleva Marich's was one of the most overlooked scientific brains of her day. Am I overdoing it? Maybe. It's the 13th time you've gone through it. I know. Relax. It will be fine. You're right. It'll be five people. It'll be... Easy. Right. Hi, Eleanor. Yes? All set? Just about. Good. We have you, Mike. But I think you'll still need to speak up for the cheap (laughs) seats. Sorry? I'm only kidding. It's a free talk. If you're ready. I am. Then let's get started, shall we? Holy. Whoa. That's gotta be a hundred people. A hundred and fifty. How best ever turn out. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Dr. Eleanor Kering. Could you just, uh, give me a minute? Of course. In uh, just a minute. (laughs) Do you need... No, no. Take your seat. I'll be right out. Okay. So here I was. I knew Maleva Marich's life back to front. But I suddenly felt nervous and unsure about her in a way I hadn't been before. I was assuming I'd be speaking to a crowd of three, all above 85 and from the local library. Before me sat young people, old people, all ages in between. And all I could think about was if their interest was in Marich, or Marich and I, or just me. More specifically, Ford and me. Then I realized. 
Maleva Maric was one of the most overlooked scientific brains in her day. Maleva Maric, a powerful brain, an eager scientist, had been dismissed by her contemporaries because of her personal life. Suddenly, I didn't care why these people were here. I wasn't about to live through the same. I can do this. Dr. Eleanor Kering, everyone. Thank you, and thank you all for coming tonight. As some of you may know, Maleva Maric was one of the most overlooked scientific brains in her day. She was a Serbian physicist and mathematician. Though her contributions were often ignored, she is best remembered as the first wife of Albert Einstein. That is one of history's greatest tragedies. I am here to talk to you all tonight about Maric's contribution to the field of physics, but more broadly speaking, what it means to be a woman in a discipline that's mostly male. There will be time at the end for questions, but first, how many of you can name a female scientist beyond Marie Curie? Well, at the end of this talk, let's hope a few more of you can raise your hands. Maleva was born course, in Titel, we'll Serbia. never know how much of Einstein's work can be directly attributed to Maleva. But in conclusion, we're a field that needs to examine its priorities. Thank you. I think we've got time for one or two questions, maybe. Maybe you, there. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, in regards to the upcoming movie... Uh-oh. Here we go. How big of a role do you think Maleva will play? Oh, well, you know, it is Hollywood, but in my experience with the team behind the film, they've been really considerate of how big of an impact Mara Chad. That's great to hear. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you think that's because you and Ford Hamilton were sleeping together? Really? <laughs> no, actually, I... Uh, we'll, we'll take another question. Yes, yes. That hand up the back. <clears throat> uh, yeah, thanks. But before I say any more, I think you, my friend, you should do us all a favor and leave. Holy crap! Is that Ford Hamilton? <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> I, I didn't mean... Don't talk, just grab your things. Look, man... I I was just teasing. Look, man, I wasn't asking. Holy shit. You can't make me leave. You're right. Ramon? You want him out, sir? On the street, please. Christ, okay, okay, I'm going. Thank you. Sorry about that. Hi. Hi. First of all, great talk. Thank you. Eleanor convinced me about Maleva's impact on Einstein. I hope she's convinced you too. Second of all, ignore assholes like that. You got here without me. I don't know if that's true. It is. How many of you all came because of me? See? One, two, fine, 15. Out of 150, though, those are good numbers. You did this, Elena, not me. Sure, I got the book in more people's hands. But once they read it, they came here for you. See? And yet, here you are, interrupting. Yeah, I wasn't planning to. I'm sorry, he just... Was a run-of-the-mill jerk. And now you're making a scene. Eleanor, look, I... I'm sorry. Does everyone want to give them some... privacy? No! Yeah, no! I wasn't going to say anything. Not publicly. But I don't want you to run again. So here's the deal. You were right about the option. I... It shouldn't have happened that way. I knew it might not close and I didn't tell you because I didn't want to scare you into leaving. I didn't... I was afraid that was the only reason you had stayed. I see. Yeah. And then when you came to me angry, I assumed the worst. About you. About everything. Okay. I had grown so attached to you, I was falling for you. But that doesn't mean I wasn't afraid. Afraid of what? Everyone in my life, since I've become famous, has wanted something from me. Not just people I like, but people I love. My sister wanted a house. My mother, a role in my management company. My ex-wife, all the fame and money that came with my image. I don't know what it's like to interact with people who don't want things from me. That was new. And it also wasn't totally true. Yes, it was. Elena, it wasn't. 
maybe you didn't want fame, but our whole relationship was based on quid pro quo. It was under the guise of an arrangement. <gasps> no, not that kind of thing. It was, and we both knew it. So even though we had said we had feelings for one another, and I knew I liked you, I knew too I didn't know how to trust you. I hadn't given you a reason not to trust me. I know, but you were angry, and I assumed... I had every right to be, Ford. I... Can we do this without an audience? Please. Listen, I... Shh. Wait. I... Shh. Another minute. I'm sorry. I... Couldn't resist? Hate someone being a jerk to you. So you made a scene? Not intentionally. Can take the actor out of a film. But he'll always find a stage. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. At my talk. Yeah. Publicly. How did you find out about it? Honestly? We should adopt that as a policy. Bibi. Ah. She's been keeping tabs. Naturally. Elena, I owe you an apology. For which part? For all of it. For everything. For dragging you into this. For convincing you to do something you didn't want to do. For assuming then you'd done it all for the wrong reasons. I know you didn't want any of this. And I'm sorry. Thank you. I really am. So sorry. For all of it. You know what I hate, Ford? Men, assuming I don't have agency. I, uh... You didn't drag me into anything. I came willingly. And you sure as hell didn't run the show in whatever it was that was going on between us. I was angry about the option. I... And I had every right to be. But I wasn't going to leave. Even though you didn't want to be there? There you go again. What? Assuming. Without asking. You know what? You have no idea what I wanted. You didn't then, and you don't now. What do you want? What do I want? I... I want to be a person who isn't afraid to assert herself. I want to keep doing my research and teaching, but I want to stop pretending I like the way I'm being treated. I want to put myself first. And I want to stop living life in the background. And I want a guy who chooses me. Because at the end of the day, I choose me. And he'll have to, too. I want that for you, too. All of it. Great. What the hell are you doing? I, uh, I was going to kiss you. No! Why? I'm angry at you. We can kiss and make up. You're dating someone else. Who? Annie... Jesus, Elena. Haven't you experienced this enough to know not to believe the paparazzi? So these past few months you've been... Single, alone, miserable, figuring out how to get you back? Let me guess. You're optioning my book. No. Look how many people you brought here tonight. You didn't need me to do it. You never needed me to help your career. You're meant to find your footing on your own. So am I. I don't want to help you with your career. I want to hold your hand and cheer you on as you succeed. I don't want to use your intelligence to bolster my image. I want to wake up next to you and marvel at the things you say. And then go look them up after you go to work. (laughs) I want to date you, privately. I want to experience the world with you. Because even in a few weeks, I can tell the world is better that way. I... you want to date me? Privately? Preferably. I don't know if that's going to work for me. Oh. Uh, okay. You're great. And you make me laugh. You make me feel beautiful and special and important. But... I really wanted to go to the Oscars. And if this is going to be a totally private thing... Just shut up, okay? Sorry, are you quoting your own movie? Suddenly I feel this was all a big mistake. I don't even know what we agreed to. Nothing. Not this time. We're just... Hi, I'm Ford Hamilton. Elena Caring. It's really nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. 